surprise, motherfucker. Yes, guys, good evening. Welcome to the most messy show on the Bluebirds channel. Uh, I am here with Mr. Matthew Angel and our beautiful. Oh, he's gone now. He's had enough of that already. <laughs> Says me, I upset him already. But most importantly, we are here with the legend that is Mr. Gavin Gordon. How are you, mate? You okay? I'm good, thank you. But I don't know what I said to Matt. It's <laughs> Him already. Defend him already. We literally <laughs> had you on you for five minutes and you got rid of our co-host like. That's how we'll roll now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mate, mean, honestly, I, I, like I said to you before we started, I will do my best not to prop a fanboy out with you, but no, honestly, massive appreciation for you joining us and coming on to talk and that. Um, massive, really appreciate it. So thank you so much. Um, so... What I was thinking was we will talk a bit about uh, last night. Obviously, a lot of you watched the uh, the live along with us. The, sorry, the watch along with us last night. So I figured we'll cover a little bit of that. Um, we got a few questions. I've definitely got a few questions I want to ask Gav. And then obviously, you beautiful people in the in the, uh, the comment section. I'm sure Gav will be happy to to answer some. Um, so first of all, then with last night then for, I suppose for both of you um one nil uh win away at, uh, at uh, Birmingham do we think we should have done better against a, a struggling Birmingham side um or is it just a case of points on the board we take it and run with it difficult one really isn't it? I, I would have just liked to have um seen us be a bit more attacking at the start and I think, obviously, as I mentioned last night, um, I think Birmingham obviously needed to win the game more than what we did, um, given the position they're in in the league. So the pressure probably would have been on them a bit more. Um, and I just didn't think we, we pressed enough early doors. I would have liked to have seen a bit more pressure on them early doors, really, and, you know, tried to, you know, if we had nicked a goal for the 15, 20 minutes, then that pressure is... You know, you're, you're turning that up 100%, aren't you? But, um, yeah, it was a cagey first half, I thought. A um, couple of chances for either team, but nothing clear-cut, really. But, um, yeah, and I, th I think we performed a bit better second half. Yeah, I, yeah, I think um, if you go away from home, you just you want to stay in the game. But credit to what seem Cardiff um, do pretty much throughout the season, you don't... Um, concede um, like one or you only concede like one or two goals. It's only like and a, a handful of games where teams have have done well and scored well, blown um, Cardiff out the the water really. But um, yeah, Cardiff seems to be in and around the game. So especially going away from home, if you can nick some points or take some points away from home and then bring them back and then sort of sort out your home record. I think that's that's the sort of plan, that, even at the start of the season, that's what you want. You want your home form to be well and then um, get as many points away from home as possible. So, yes, you would like to have a good performance, but in them games, for me, it's, it's all about getting the result, coming back, and then as you progress, because there's only a few more games left, then start to look at your home form especially and then show the home fans about what plans you have going yeah. forward and what you want to do. Why do you think that um, Cardiff, by stats-wise, I think we've picked up more points or pretty much have picked up more points away from home this season as opposed to home? Do you think that's a 
a confidence thing at home or well it has to be that's gotta be the reason wouldn't you not think or yeah well um sometimes you get that it depends and because the way the start of the season w was good and everything worked when you go through a run where you not winning or it gets hard especially at home you hear a lot more and the, the the pressure of the fans is and that's in a way it's good and bad sometimes because the fan base in cardiff is tremendous and you when they're up and buoyant and they're with you it it can drive you on and you can go on crazy runs um but when things are slightly against you you can hear all the other comments as well and you hear all, and if you've got younger players, that will affect them, or new players are not quite used to that. Um, you sort of see that, and you, and then you can sort of tell how the season's going about confidence and how the team is. It seems like at home, sometimes the pressure is a little bit too much for some of them. Yeah. And that's that's um, where it, it shows in the results. But So away from home, it's sort of getting a little bit more freedom to try things and and go at the games but that's looking from afar and all yeah. I'm looking from when I used to be around there and you can tell when you're in a little dip of form confidence yeah usually sometimes away from home sort of gives you a little respite and then you go right okay can I get my form there and then bring it back at home and sort of do a little bit better as a player then Gav did you prefer playing away from home because obviously when you go away the the, the... The hardcore fans, I'm not saying the fans are different at home because, you know, like you said, Cardiff got a tremendous fan base. But obviously the hardcore fans will go and they're always vocal. You can always hear them. Um, and, it's, you know, going away is brilliant. I love it. Um, but did you have any preference? Did you prefer playing at Ninian Park or did you prefer the away games? Was there better atmosphere from the fans type of thing? Did you have any preference? or? No, um, I used to love Ninian Park. Um, like I said, when I... Let's say the first time I went there is like say with Lincoln and I scored a couple of goals there. So I already had an affiliation with the pitch and and scoring and then hearing the fans and the way um Cardiff came back and beat Lincoln at that day as well. It was, it was like wow <laughs> I want my some of this. And then when you yeah. go home and you especially in night games, I used to love them. Um um so I used to like playing at home. But so, like I said before, if if you're if you're slightly lacking in confidence, they are quick to tell you that you are lacking in confidence. If that makes sense, so that can bring on a little bit of pressure. But I, I've had previous before that, so that I it, it didn't really phase me. I just knew that I had to try and get out of that um, lack of just try and get my form back as quickly as possible because you're not going to go through a season sky high um mm. but it's how quickly you can come out of your, your troughs and stay in your peak really but no i didn't have any um issues but you can tell with some of the younger ones or some of the new ones who who do melt if the pressure especially at home because like i said it is a little bit more intense and you like say you can hear a lot more it's been a sink or swim i suppose it could be couldn't it um, yeah, but that's what football is. It's about confidence. So yeah. This is what you want to do. This is what you want to do. You want to go out and perform. When you don't feel confident to perform, you, you sort of hide. Some people hide on the pitch. It's weird to say, but that's what you can you can actually see it. And then the fans see it as well. Um, so they will say it to you. That's In a way, that's what you need. You need players to go, right, okay, this is what I am in a bad run. I need to get out of it and everyone's saying it. So at least I, what I need to do is then work hard. Some people and I think that, that, that. that's a thing with Cardiff fans. And I don't know if you've ever picked up on that. You know, you might not have scored goals or in, in games, but it, Cardiff fans will still take you and support you if they can see you trying, you know, your best and you're giving it your all type of thing. Would you agree with that, Gal? I do, yeah. Um, like I say, we'll. we'll I remember speaking with Phil Stanton and and he was there before I came, he just said, make sure you work hard, because that's what they do, they want to try, but make sure you work hard. Yeah. If you score your goals or whatever do you think, but first and foremost, work hard. Um and that was that's was my game anyway. Um but that's what yeah, it sticks out. It shows that people 
working class people, aren't they? People want to see a, someone put in a graft. Yes, you want to see the skills, silky skills and everything, but you want to see people playing for the shirt, playing for the club. You don't want nobody hiding. And I, I like players. I, that's the one thing people can do: work hard, no matter how your form is or anything. Work hard. That's a given. If yeah. you can't do that, then there's, there's something seriously wrong. Yeah. yeah, like as as I mentioned before, yeah, like is we do the coaching for for Fleur de Lis and the lines, flower and the lines. Um, like I don't necessarily care too much if they miss a pass or miss a tackle or something like that. You know, all I want is the effort. Like the other stuff can come later. Do you know what I mean? I know not everyone is naturally born with certain abilities and whatnot, but as long as the boys and girls like put the effort in, I couldn't care less. That's that's all I asked for. You know, it's all we asked for as a club. But um I tell you what was one thing we've we talked about on, on previous shows is about me in particular about <laughs> barking up his tree is Kian Ashford, uh, who finally came on last night. Um very, very talented young man. Um seemed to link well with Ruben when Ruben came on. Um, so I just hope now, like I said, you know, playing away from home, it could have been a single swim potentially. And he come on and with Ruben, it seemed to change the game a little bit. You know, added a bit of uh bit of passion, bit of fight, and lo and behold, you obviously kind of obviously went away with the win. So um so it's nice to see that we are actually going to start bringing on these kids and hopefully it's not just a, a flash in a pan for him and he, we can see some more minutes from over the remainder of the season. But um, I thought Caldwell, when he came on, he was outstanding in fairness. I thought he was brilliant considering he missed the last game or two already, I think. Yeah, that's right, mate. Injury. I thought um, he came on fresh legs and I just thought he was, he was really good. You always get that as well with young, young, younger players is chomping at the bit who want want to get on, they want to play, they want to play for Cardiff. If yeah. they grow up through the ranks and they have the opportunity and they, and they see it on the pitch where they go right, what does the team need? They need effort, and that's what they want to do. You want that enthusiasm to come on. That's what you want to see young players do and just sort of express themselves. And that's what it sounds like he did yesterday, which. She's got to sort of find a role in the side, and that's how you stay in it. But then I think the difficult one then is Cardiff away at Millwall there on the weekend. So, like, you know, I'm sure you've played here a few times over the years. Um, maybe not. I, you know, how dangerous could it be, I suppose, for a, a young lad? To put him in against a team like Millwall away, you know, have you, you know, when when you were playing, was you did you play there as a younger lad or before you? you know, yeah, with me, because um, I was. Um, it was when it used to be the YT U trainee days. Um, so I left school and I signed a two year YT, but in that first year I was playing first team football. By the end of it, so I was one of the young lads who they just put you in hmm. um so like you said it's either sink or swim um i i relished it i i took i took my chance so i was starting the following season um so i signed a pro and then i started playing but um i think you just carry on do exactly what you did um probably for the birmingham and then bring him on again hmm. and see yeah. if he can make that same reaction then when you come back home maybe go, you know what, you may deserve a chance to start. Yeah. It's all about partnerships. If you can play them in partnerships and you go, right, well, that works, that is what you want to do. You want it to, to balance that side. And, and if the partnerships work, then... <coughs> I think it, then, yeah. playing him at home as well, if he had a start at home and the crowd got behind him, I think that his confidence would go through, kind of go yeah. through the roof as well. Um in my opinion, but yeah, pr agree with Gab. I think he'd probably come off the bench again on the weekend. Well, I'd like to think he would have some kind of minutes again. Um, never a nice place to go, and I think they had a good. I'm sure they beat Leicester as well, didn't they? Um, they last home game, so 
again, they're they're near the bottom and they they're fighting for everything as well. It's so close, which we alluded to last night. I think from fifty from something like sixteenth down to twenty third is like three or four points in it. I think. Yeah, yeah, that's the nature of the championship, though, isn't it? It's a, it's yeah. a mad league. It's either at the top or the bottom. There's there's always something people can sort of play for. Just and I don't think there's ever any shock results because, again, we've said on the day anybody in that league can beat anybody. This, I think, is without doubt one of the toughest leagues around, really, to call results wise. I don't think many accumulators get one from results uh, bet on in the in the championship. <clears throat> Not that I'm encouraging betting of any kind. Um, yeah, well, but, within reason, yeah. it's how you want to. Keep it fun. <laughs> only, only gamble what you can afford. May, only make That's it fun. <laughs> Just get that disclosure in now. Thank you, Nick. So, taking away from uh, last night, then, uh, Tom Cardiff in general, for me, um, what do you think of Bullet and, well, Bullet overall and the fact that he's not got a contract? So, me and Ainge have talked about it for a few weeks now. You know, we feel this is going to be another Lamucci business where he's just let go come the end of the season and we, we start all over again with a transfer window that we can use. But that's that's the feeling we're getting. I just wonder if you feel the same, mate. Yeah, well, I've, I've a quick question with for you. So you, throughout the whole, from the start of the season to now, how do you reckon he's, he's done? How do you reckon he's... Because he, you've, you, you, like, say, had a... Good start in different middle, and it looks like he's sort of starting to get something back again. And I've looked as well, and he's and he's very he's, he likes to change his formations. It's like he doesn't know which what what is his yeah. best side or how the best to plays. It seems like he's still learning. So what what have you thought of him? Yeah, that that was one of the things we've um, picked up on. That obviously he's come over from the Turkish <laughs> leagues, and granted, he's managed at different you know at high levels um, abroad and things, but. You know, coming to the championship, like I mentioned earlier, that league is a different animal type of thing. And I think I think we've been found out at times. Like, we started the year pretty well. And then, obviously, the games you play, other teams get to watch how you play and, and things like that. And from my perspective, Rob might be slightly different. Um, I, sometimes when things are going not quite right or vice versa, then we, he's not able to adapt things quick enough for me um and i think that'll come with time and experience we've just got to trust that we've got to back him um i would like him to stay you know at the start of the season if you'd said to me we'd finish 11th in the table after the last couple of seasons we'd had you know i would have bit your hand off um so you know progression there's been progression without shadow of a doubt granted we've had a bit of a lull at times and performances have been poor but we've got to realize as well that he's coming in and he's learning his role as well but again with Cardiff fans being as passionate they are you know you'll have a nucleus of people thinking we deserve to be better than 10th or 11th we should be up there pushing the playoffs and granted you know the size of the, the club we are we should be but let's not forget what we've been through over the last couple of years with them close relegations, the transfer embargoes and things. So I just think trust the process. Hopefully they'll they'll back him. But I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't. Yeah, I think you summed up that uh, perfectly, mate. Um without a shadow of a doubt, like we all would have bitten you their hand off if we offer us mid table come the start of the season. Um it is a trust the process. Yes, there's been times where we've on shows where we've questioned uh, decisions, whether it be in substitution, starting lineups, even um, some of his decisions still, which we'll potentially get into, I'm not too sure about. But at the end of the day, as, as you said, you know, he is new to this league, he is trying to adapt. Um, but I do just think he is going to be a Lamucci, and I think he's going to be out the door come the summer. And then, God forbid, who the hell is going to come in? Warnock's about a job again, so so maybe we'll go back there again. But no, Sharon won't let him know, man. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, looking from afar, like I said, that's what I've got from exactly what you've just 
said basically this this is what i sort of see because the way he's chopping and changing and um looking at different formations looking at different partnerships look at people on the side it's like he is learning that process and he is it, it's a harsh league to learn from um because it is like it's harsh and good because it is so challenging um you know like i said and everyone can beat each other so yes i think he's done a, a good job um i think he's sort of stabilized sort of has a plan and that is what i think cardiff definitely needs you don't want to start again because so every time you start again from a new season it's yeah yeah you start from, from step one again and it and then and then you wait till christmas to try and get your um your thoughts and your ideas across to your players and then hopefully get them players on board with what you have to do and then it all starts again so if hopefully they can sort sort something out and keep him and then progress for for next season especially if you've got some because the academy is quite good it's good that you can watch it on like say your youtube yeah play all the academy games on there and and stuff so it's the academy looks decent so you've got some good players coming through it's all about using them and if you've got that sort of structure in your in the club side where you can bring one or two of them through as well as probably getting some older established players around it that if you can work that balance as well and i think he's sort of the person to do so but it's all about like you said giving him the chance to yeah, and I think as as a player, like you mentioned about chopping and changing, <coughs> you know that type of league. If you haven't played for three or four games and then you you chuck straight back into the side, it's an odd league to get back into. Did, did you ever find that as a player, Gab? If you're not consistently playing and you perhaps you're only playing 10, 15 minutes a year, and then after three games you you get chucked back in the side. You probably mentality wise, you probably right. I'm starting. I've got to go out to perform, but. How did you find that as a as a professional player coming in if you hadn't been playing regularly and then bang all of a sudden you're back in the side? Yeah, that that's what used to be my sort of issue because sometimes I, 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 I quite a few injuries as well. So coming back from there, you, you sort of you build up how you play. So you, you had the the reserve side, which was good because we still had um, ways of trying to get your form back. Once you had your chance, you, you sort of in them days because the squad was sort of the squad aspect of football was just building where usually if you played well you seem to sort of keep your spot and that's what gave you the confidence and the you got your form and you and you sort of ran with it because the last thing you want to do if you were like on a scoring and you're playing well form the last thing you want to do is get dragged off just to be rested or something like that it's you're more likely to lose your form straight away if you don't if you're not carrying it on. So um no, I, I would prefer to play games regularly if you're playing well. And then having that competition sort of pushing you to keep playing well because you know that somebody's waiting in the wings to come in. But now it's sort of like a squad game where literally you're chopping and changing it and you so you're in, you're out, depending on different games. And I don't think that, that would have worked for me personally. Um but like I say, everyone's slightly different now. It's about how, what sort of culture you grow up in. How would you like, do you like that as a fan? Do you feel that players play better if they give them the opportunity to have a run in the side to show the capabilities? Oh, I'm many percent. But then I feel like sometimes then, though, to, to caveat with that, there's some players in the team, which I'm sure we'll talk about in a bit, that has had several chances if not more where we would expect them to get rotated but they still seem to be in that starting 11 every single saturday tuesday wednesday or whatever it may be um you scored last night mind <laughs> don't no people will kick off <laughs> um, oh we will well jump to it then gav um josh bowler what's your thoughts I haven't, like I say, I haven't seen too much. Up, obviously. So, sorry? Oh, I broke I sorry, didn't you? Oh, sorry. I love you. <laughs> sorry. I said um, Josh Bowler when he's not tidying his hair up. Yeah, well, 
<laughs> like I said, it, it's all about, like I said, it, that could be just about confidence. I think so. That could be all about, com- and it's weird how confidence plays because um, you see some players and you think he's not trying or he's not doing this, he's not doing that, and then all of a sudden they turn it on because if they feel confident at that moment. And then, like you said, if you get a good run or, or is one of them where they need the manager to put an arm around them, um, whether Bullet is like that to put an arm around somebody, um, I don't know. No, um, and that's no, probably yeah. what maybe he needs, um, just to feel like he is one of the main people to that, yes, you're going to be playing in my side. Yeah, that might work for him, um, but that, it, it's hard to say criticize if you if I'm not watching it from the start, his full process, yeah, um, because then I can have a better angle on it and say, look, well, I've I've seen him close up and I've gone, yeah, he's showing this in training or he's doing this, but when he's going out there, he's not showing it. So that's definitely a confidence thing because he's, he's feeling the pressure or I'm seeing him struggling training. Well, why is he why is he now playing? Yeah. Or why? I think you know he, he it is hundred percent confidence thing with him because he shows ability in flashes throughout most games. If I'm honest, but there's certain things then he'll do during games where whether that'll be tracking back to help defenders, um, where he doesn't do, and then it comes back down to the Cardiff fans thing then that it doesn't look as if he's trying hard enough type of thing. But without shadow of a doubt, he's got potential and ability oh yeah and, you know, we've, we've, you've shown that and we've said that previous as well but it's just little things i think he needs to work on just to make him that a bit better as well but well, you know we, we, we can't knock him he, he yeah. created the two goals up in country granted they were on goals he scored again last night so yeah he's on the show next week gav <laughs> But no, like the way, like say, he's still making them runs forward, and he obviously gambling. Um, I think. Do you, if you have a player where, for instance, if we have like someone in in midfield who's like a, a, maybe a Jason Bowen, for instance, who's skillful, good on the ball, you don't really want him, him box to box. You would have a Willie Bowling next to him to do that to do that work. Mm. So if you have certain players in your side, like say you get finding that balance playing in pairs, you have someone you have some people around them to sort of cover that, and other people will be happy to do so if if you're going to contribute going forward, if you're going to create things, people are happy to do what they're good at, maybe closing down, putting the foot in, getting in people's faces. Yes, you still want him to have an element of that as well, but primarily you want him to go forward and create things and and win win games for Cardiff but um yeah it's all about finding that balance and I think like you said it's it, I I believe it's probably a confidence thing. That's a good show actually because like the main thing that has been um rotated over the season is the midfield. Um when whether it be Wintel, Rawls, CO, Ramsey, Turnbull. So I suppose you know, if he doesn't know who he's going to be pairing up with in midfield from one weekend to the next or one game to the next, then, yeah, I suppose he doesn't know where he's coming or going, fairness, does he? Yeah, but you're asking him to do different things, aren't you? So Yeah, because they are they're all different players, really, aren't they? They're all yeah, this week different. you're saying you're playing number 10. Next week you're saying, well, not be slightly more holding or be box the box. And you're like, well, 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 where do I go? My, my strength's doing this, but you're asking me to do that. It's... It is. It, if you can get a settled side, you can get a settled partnership anywhere. It makes it makes a big difference in in the way you play and then the way you you can then perform and and show your qualities in the game. Sweet. Um, Jump into some of the comments and Rob, actually. Yes, sir. I know we got thousands knocking about. Um, so <laughs> Louise is back in the chat. You'd be pleased to know. Hello, Vikings. She is our Viking leader, Gav. You'll get to right. um, you'll you'll see along the comments, mate. It's a regular occurrence. Um, <laughs> just here, Robo and Ramsey are disciplinary. Um, not too sure what 
But no, I, I see the bow. I don't know what it was. What's actually happened? Out have you seen anything, guys? No, I only heard something on uh, one of the social media uh, pages today that um, obviously he set out um, standards at the start of the season, and for whatever reason, something obviously happened. And I think obviously there's been more issues with Robinson over the. You know, he hasn't been there or thereabouts. Been injured apparently, but um, yeah, for whatever reason, it's come out now today that uh, I think he said that he need Robo's not going to be involved again this weekend, but Romeo should be back yeah. in the squad. So I don't know what have happened, but at the end of the day, I suppose it's you know it's got to be frustrating for those types of players who haven't played football. Um, very Romeo, I don't he's had the odd appearance here and there, haven't he? But very minimal time minutes he's had on the pitch so it's got to be frustrating for him really if you know so you know whether they've had a bit of a training bust up i don't know well that can be any good training bust ups in your day gav I've a, no i've seen a few i probably weren't involved in many but um i've seen a few it's more the fiery characters the ones who expect you to um sort of carry yourself a certain way um, and it, and they will tell you, like you said, if you're not working or if you're not putting it in, they will, like, if they see it on match day, they will, it will happen for a certain time and then they will tell you in training. Any and names then, come to mind? Um, no, I, I wouldn't say Buster, but I know, um, like, say, Leo Fortune West is a sort of uh, one of them characters. Is he? Well, yes, he, he get. Because the way it, his style is 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 very, it was very different, wasn't it? It's not that you won't say he was a natural footballer. He looks no. good on the eye, but he's effective for what he does. He's a super yeah, player yeah. for what he does and what he's good at. And then, um, so you've got, I think it probably asked Scott McCulloch. Yeah. He, he was like proper footing, Scottish sort of thing. Right, okay, we're going to work hard. That that sort of thing, you know, them little things clash and stuff like that. But yeah. um, they're no bust ups really. But it's just people saying it, how it is. And to be honest, we have some very good leaders in in my time at Cardiff. We had quite a few good people who who weren't shine in telling you about if they didn't think you were putting it in. So yeah. Do you think that's what's lacking nowadays in this day and age? Perhaps that's not said enough. Do you think? I think so, yeah. Um, I think um, people are quick to then say it's bullying and, and, and things, like that, yeah. things and things now. And yeah, I, you know, I'm all for constructive criticism. And at the end of the day, they're getting paid a decent wedge for doing something they enjoy doing. So if you know, if if you're captain or your leader, or you've got a, a senior player who's able to, you know, voice them opinions, then they should be able to do it, shouldn't they? I think so, yeah, and, and no one really overstood the overstood the mark in in when they were sending those when I was there. So it's you know when you're not playing well, it's hard when someone else says it. It's hard to take because yeah. you don't want people to say it to you because you know how bad you've been playing or or whatever it is. But you need to hear it to then kickstart you to go right. No, I need to start doing something about it. In in my in my eyes, that's what. You yeah. need to happen now. Nowadays, I don't think because if you look at um, whether you think the academy system is good or, or bad, but I see it as everyone has the coaching book manual now that all the coaches and they all coach the same way. So everybody, you'll, you'll watch the academy games, some of them, and they all play the same way. Everybody keeps the ball, wants to do the. the, the Instead of having individuals come through like your Joe Coles or you or the other people like that, you just want the Gazas. You want people to be individual and just do something. Yeah, enjoy the game. Now it's more of a everyone's sort of program to play a certain way and and how to pass the ball, be strong and and sometimes it's quite boring. The same well, blinking playbook type of thing. Yeah, everyone, it's quite boring to watch. Because if people are playing the same tactics against someone else playing the same tactics, then it's like, well, what, what we're watching here, you have the ball, you have the ball. But if it's end to end and people are doing, like, say, a Fortune West battling up there and all of a sudden crops up with a goal and out of nowhere pings it from outside the box and is 
week of foot, then you think, wow, where did that come from? Mm-hmm. That's what it's about, and that's what football's about, and that's where you go to watch. And yeah, I don't think they I think sometimes the academy system has has, has pushed that out of some players, but there's still one or two in there, and hopefully they can still come through. Yeah. Awesome. Um Reese says, uh something I think we've been lacking for a while, no leaders. You still have Moza Bamba, Pels, Gunners, etc. Um I seen an interesting comment um from Louise and she thinks that uh Jamal Collins future captain material. I wouldn't necessarily agree with that personally myself yet. Um, I, th- I still think he's finding his feet. Much better performance from him last night, mind. So it was nice to see. I think they give him qu- quite a high rating last night. Um, so it was nice to see him. Obviously, he've had his trouble since he's been at Cardiff as well. Um, but again, now he's starting to play a bit more consistent. I think when that Espron, Wilson Espron come in, they were chopping and changing between the two. When they, but he seems to be a little bit settled now. And again, his confidence is only going to grow with the more games he's he's going to play, really. So hopefully, you now we'll have that running. Like I said, there's only two or three games left now, isn't it? So um, mm. hopefully, you know, and we'll see some good things from him next year as well. But I think that's a big, bit of a big call for me, in my opinion. That's a big, that is a big shout in fairness. Is he a talker on the pitch then? Is he, or is he, is he sort Doesn't of one? Doesn't come in... across that way. Doesn't no, come I wouldn't have said so way, either. Um, that's. That's where you probably can see it. I think you get your little things where you, you get some who literally is, is talking to people and sort of pointing and sort of guiding people where to go. That's yeah. where you sort of see the sort of leader mentality in in players. So, no, um, I tell you what, I do see as a leader material, and you know, Ainge probably knows exactly what I'm going to say is Nat Phillips, um, the lad on loan from Liverpool. Um, I'm such a huge fan. Like he, he's he just looks like a natural leader. He looks like he was born to be a captain. Um, I definitely think that I pain you to say it, but he's going to be out of Cardiff's range come a summer. I think that he will end up in the Premiership. I, I think personally, uh, whether it be one of the promoted teams or a low to mid table Premiership team, um, he's too good for the Championship personally. I think. Um, he's a very, very good centre half in the end. Yeah, he's been he's been rock solid since he's uh, since he's come in. I mean, in fairness, he's probably been one of our standout players since he came in in January. So, um, yeah, I'd love to see him win blue again next year, but I'd be very surprised um, whether or not. Obviously, with Rambo still there, I did mention last night. Obviously, I didn't realise at the at the time when we were doing the watch along that. Rambo come off because he had a, a tweak to his hamstring. Um, I haven't seen anything about that today. They are having a scan. But my, I, I think I did, I'm not sure if I said it on the watch along last night or in the WhatsApp group after. But, you know, I think if he has another bad one, I wouldn't be surprised if Rambo calls it a day. I don't know what your thoughts are on, on that, Gav. But, you know, he's he's been injury stricken now the last, well, since he signed back at Cardiff and obviously previously with his, his other clubs. But, <laughs> How much more can his body take? That's all. That's all I'm thinking. Like, yeah, there is a. You get to a point where, you, if it's literally, if you come on, and you know there's something not right, because I watched some of the the the, the clips, and someone he, he's not, he wasn't moving the way I, you've seen him move. Yeah. Um. Um. So yeah, it, it it's always hard because you you go out now and thinking of can i just get through this game without getting injured rather than thinking right how can i win this game and how can i do that and i used and that's why i got to a stage of just thinking wow i've got through that game without getting injured instead of impacting the game and doing something positive to try and win the game it's like that's not the way to be thinking as a footballer as a footballer you want to go out and play football and play a game of football and win it no. But if you're going out thinking, I don't want to get, I hope on the muscle don't go or hope this doesn't go and, and thinking about other things than the game, it's, it, it does come, it does come to a stage and you, you have to then make that, them decisions about 
um, how would you want to do it? I think that's the reason yeah. why you, it came down just to see if he probably could still do something. And at the moment, he's it, struggling a bit, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I definitely think there's something there. You know, if even like next year, then perhaps if he does be a bit of a bit part player coach type of, of role where he can come in for games if he's needed. But, you know, having his experience in and around the dressing room, and I think it's been well broadcasted that even though he has been injured for most of the season, he's still been there and in around um, the squad. So you know, he's definitely a player that others can learn from, even if he's not going to be playing regular type of thing. So, you know, I, if if I was Cardiff, I'd be trying to do everything I could to make sure if he isn't going to play much next year, is there something we can find for him? To keep him with us, type of thing. Yeah, no, I was, I was thinking that as well. I was just thinking as I was watching the highlights. If even if it's not a hundred percent fit player, just being on the pitch with a Ramsey is will bring up the people around you. People who think, what has he done? What what that will mean? His ability and and everything about him is. You like he will, will bring up the players around him on in that side, and the performance will step up a level, whether it's his performances or not. It's just his presence in that in that side, like say in and around the side. I think will have a better um, help for this uh, help for them to to do something special to 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 perform to pull something out just by him being on the on the pitch. So. Yeah, if they can do something, either with that's a coaching role or is that um, or something like that, mentoring. Yeah, as long as they're keeping around in and around the the squad, I think anybody coming in will will definitely benefit from yeah his experience. Sorry, Dee, any other questions in there, Robert? Uh, <clears throat> so first one's caught my eyes straight away. <laughs> Though he's so Gav, do you take out any ankles. Did I? Did you? Uh, well, maybe one or two, <laughs> if, if, especially if they come to me. <laughs> um, I can't think. Yeah, did you, one or two, didn't I? Did you ever, like, in your career, have a player you would come across and you would think, every time you come across, um, whether it be probably a centre half, I'd imagine, where you'd think, Right, I am literally going to turn you inside out, and I'm going to make you my little biatch for the game. Like because whether it be something personal, or whether it's because of where they're from, or something like that, that you just thought you had something against them that you just want to show them up. I had actually had one. Um, I think I was playing for one of the early days um, for Hull, mm. and. Um, I can't remember his name, um, but um, I, really say, like, an old school centre half <laughs> came came and he 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 just we were just standing there and he stood on my toe, he just stepped on my foot, and luckily he didn't he didn't you know grab um, actually hurt me. I was like, what did you have for? <laughs> and, it, <laughs> and I went, okay, then that's fine. So then I. Did exactly what you said. So I was megging him, and then run around <laughs> because I was, I was what sixteen at the time, and he was about thirty. So yeah, and that's what I did. And so that's, that's probably that probably set you up then. Something like yeah, that probably did. gives you. And I think as a striker, you probably need that mentality, yeah, that little totally. bit of arrogance that you're going to go in and do that to those um, types of centre halves. Yeah, no, that's what because I remember um, Warren Joyce. Um, I don't know if you know him. If um, he was, he was one of the older players on our side for Hull, and um, and he says, "What happened to you today?" Sort of thing. And I went, "Well, he stepped on my toe," <laughs> and he went, "You know what? I might step in your toe from now on because if you start playing like that, that's what you. Need. If I need you to play it like that, that's what I'm going to start doing to you. You need to be playing like that a lot more. So yes, I think I was that sort of person who probably needed something to sort of." Start me or get yeah, me going yeah. and um, kind of rile you up type of thing. Yeah. So maybe if, if it was like a, it's a big game, for instance, or if I knew the TV was there, not intentionally, like say, I sort of seem to my game seems to slightly rise and then 
like say, I think like with the and taking someone's ankles out, but it was real, wasn't it? That, that game as well. <laughs> She's probably still running around the floor, but um, <laughs> yeah, um, I did watch that. I watched that the other day actually. It's quite funny. <laughs> a tackle, and then everyone saying now it should be red carded and this that, and the other. But anyway, good job. There was no VAR back in them days, guys. Well, the ball was there first, and I won the ball. Yeah. <laughs> me, and um, he had a go at heart for the throw because he. He had the dodgy throw, so yeah, it was incredible. Day, that oh, was brilliant! Yeah, I remember that was yesterday. Like you say, you got Sam, a man walking around the pitch with doing his. I told her, so it's yeah. I don't know how he didn't get done for causing a riot. To <laughs> yeah, you know, no. when you, when you look back on on games like that, it must make you feel so proud and um, you know of what you've achieved, really. Yeah, and I like to say it's at Ninian Park, so the memories there are, are all positive and, and good. And yeah, especially that game, because that game was had everything, didn't it? It was yeah. even just warming up. I mean, I think I just remember the stand op- opposite as you come out the tunnel. It was oh, full. Man. Yeah. It was full. I was at warm up. We were a warm up. And, you know, usually people are right milling around, but no. All that was full, and every time we were warming up, and it, yeah, that's that's the sort of atmosphere is why you do football, um, and that's what you take from it. And yeah, so sort of scoring them, um, I like used to like the night games and playing under floodlights, and like when I scored my five goals, and yeah, no, it was good, very good. I did like Russian and there. diamonds was that against? It was yes, and we had a. Well, I suppose done their research. <laughs> we had a very good, um, what to say, reserve squad, so to speak. When you had Spencer Pryor. Um, Josh Lowe was was Josh Lowe in that one? Yeah, I think it was in uh, Leighton Maxwell. Yeah, no, it was Mark Bonner. Yeah, no, it was good. Some good players there. Eh? Won't talk um, about Spencer's uh, Spencer Pryor's past of Mark Vaduka or was it Mark Vaduka he passed it to or somebody yeah, else but, and put Mark Vaduka in the I think. Yeah, but he when he hit that it was a bullet. It stayed yeah. hit didn't it? and just kept going. So yeah. yeah. But what a side leads out and out that day. You, nobody would have ever dreamt of, you know, the result that day. And it was, it was the downfall of Leeds. If I'm, if I'm completely honest, that result. I think they were, they were top of the Premiership. If I'm right. Yeah. When we, top when we Premiership team, Champions League at the time. And, yeah, that's, um, yeah. That's what yeah. I tell them. So I know a few um, Leeds fans. You destroyed Leeds United single-handedly. <laughs> and that's why I said this is not destroyed, destroyed them. Destroyed Leeds United. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they weren't very happy with it. And like say a comments was that say it didn't you ask welcome Leeds. Cause riot. So. Are you well can you walk safely through Leeds Gap? Oh, no, I'm I'm all right with Leeds, I think. Um, <laughs> like say it's, it's a Swansea, I don't think <laughs> 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 but yeah. Um good question here from Reese. Uh do you suffer with any injuries now from your playing days? Loads of footballers have hip problems, ankle problems later in life. Um, any issues for yourself, if you don't mind? Um, to honest, I, was, I was all right with um, injuries other than hamstrings. Um, so if I don't run anywhere, I'm, I'm all right, I'm good. Um, but I do the odd charity game and evidently every time uh, there's always at some point where I get a slight nick of my hamstring, so that always goes. But other than that, knees are starting to feel my knees a little bit now. Um, but I'm, I'm fine other than that. Yeah, it's just... We'll touch one now. <laughs> yeah. It's, just, it's mainly it's all in your muscles, so it's more my Achilles and, and mm. that. So it's all the muscles, the back of my legs. That That's where it all stems from, my back. So that's just that's just life, I think. The question I'd like to ask you, Engab, how did you find the transition out of playing professional football and obviously having that um, routine and structure daily um, for that, obviously, I'm not sure, and you haven't got to t- tell us what you're doing now or anything. But uh, how did you find that initial transition? The first year, I was fine because I what I needed the break. To be honest, I, I fell out of football, so I was only 26, um, and I think I was at Crawley um, for, for like six months. I thought, right, end of the season, go to Crawley, get some games in, and then um, I looked for somewhere to go in the summer. And then um, I got injured at Crawley, so I was out of contract. And then I just stayed out for a year trying to fix it on my own. Um, 
And then, um, yeah, I just, I thought, right, you know what? This, my daughter, just had my daughter. She was just born. And then I was staying at home with her. And then after that year, I sort of took my way, um, myself away from everything. Like all football, all sport, everything, and just stayed at home. And then that was the, probably the wrong thing because then I sort of, I would say I went to a slight depression. And um, yeah, that's when it started getting <laughs> a bit dark, really. Um, luckily, because I unfortunately I had like people die in my, in my personal life, like family members and stuff. And that really impacted me. Then I sort of, started to bring myself out with it by talking therapy really because I, I cut myself off from everybody and then so they weren't talking to anybody else yeah and then I started doing that again and then I gradually started coming back to normal again and then I'm I'm, I'm better now um all I do miss is probably match days now bad um, things in the changing room is there and um yeah yeah I still get used to get bad because I used to work with Royal Mail for a bit but now um I'm sort of lorry driving for breaks now, so um, I still get the the banter because I do. I'm also um, chairman of the former Lincoln City former players, so I get to bring back a former player every their home game, and then we also do charity work in the local community. So I still get that aspect of talking to people and yeah. looking at different areas and stuff from Lincoln. Um, so that's a good thing to do. So as long as I keep myself busy, I seem to think that that works best. Whereas if I stop doing things, then yeah, then the thoughts yes. come and uh, yeah, that's that's where the problems are. Yeah, how important, like you mentioned about talking, if you if you're struggling, and that's I'm a big advocate for it, uh, mental health and things like that. I've had struggles myself, um, so yeah, all all for talking about it. So well done for. Uh, for saying that as well and yeah, yeah just... no no problem um but like i said um because i used to always think especially with me i had to try and get things right in my head first yeah but at that time things were never getting right so i was always still waiting to try and get things right and if you can't see anything getting right then you're just making yourself deeper and deeper so yeah like you said talking helps oh, awesome. many percent, man appreciate that no no problem um, I do have a few questions for you myself, if I may. No, well. um, a bit light-hearted. Um, <coughs> so who, in your opinion, you don't go into much detail, but who, in your, your opinion, is the most underrated player you played with? Underrated? Hmm. It gets better, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> gets, um... it gets juicier anyway, Gav. <laughs> I'm trying to think. No, I would say I don't know if people thought he, he was good or not, but um, I think Mark Bonner for, mm. Luton, for Cardiff. Good shot. I think he was he was quiet and he, but he was a very effective at what he did. Massive fan, Mark Bonner, and he just made everything tick. He just did the basic things well. Sweet. So, my brother. Most overrated player you played with? Overrated. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't got, in fairness, I would Played with or against? No. Uh, yeah, whatever tickles your fancy. Played with or against. Real Ferdinand's handcuffs. No, but obviously, I, I, did, I can't put him there because I didn't play with him that much, did I? So. <laughs> I played against <laughs> that. Um, I don't know about overrated. I feel like I should have prepped you for this, shouldn't I? <laughs> yeah. We're talking about this for, for our whole career, or yeah, well, oh, right, whatever, whatever name comes to your mind, do you think you're playing with or played against a guy and you thought, why the hell are they talking about him so much? I think he's dog poo. <laughs> well, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know his name, so um, I can't really say. But, I send um, it back. You tore inside out, does it? No, there's another one actually. Wrexham. Um, was it Wrexham? 
I don't know. Somebody was um, supposed to be getting looked at to go into the league. Oh, yeah. And I think we played him. And I think that's when Cav scored his goal from outside the box and I scored as well. <laughs> um, yeah, that, the centre-half there was being talked about as being the next best thing or something like that. And um, <laughs> yeah. I think Cav prim- Cav I prim- that box <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that happened. So. Um, well, actually, actually, it was a, I saw a clip on it. I don't know if it was Facebook or YouTube or something. But um, yeah, with that goal of that game, is that no, was good. Quality. Good um, so this is a two-parter. Uh, who is your favourite strike partner you've had during your career? And second part is who would be, past or present, your ideal strike partner? Um, I say the one I played with and had a good, probably my best career was probably Lee Thorpe. I remember that Lincoln. Oh yeah, we were sort of the same sort of size and everything, so we complemented each other well. So it weren't just me being a target man; we both could do it, and we caused problems that way because we both could win the ball and we both had a bit of pace and, and stuff. So um, yeah, Lee Thorpe and somebody who I would want to play with. Um, I would say. I love Pernu on spot. Mate, I, I don't really think they're this either. Um, no, actually, because I'm, I'm, I'm originally from Manchester, so um, Aguero. Oh, nice. Oh, you, Aguero. Were, oh, were you? you blew no yeah, red then, yeah? I'm sorry? You blew no red. Too. Well... I, my career, is, in a way, is I did School of Excellence at United, and then I did School Boys at City. Um, with School Boys, you get to watch the games and you get to wear the kit and play all the teams that way. Oh, nice! So that's why I class myself more as Man City than United. Don't tell Roger Giggs that Jesus Your Christ! Your city Man, is blue. <laughs> but I'm, I'm again. I'm from Manchester, so it, it's the blue side of Manchester, isn't it? Oh, you'll Gordon. be happy with Liverpool's result tonight, then, Gab. I don't know if you've seen that in the background. No, not yet, but my son's a Liverpool supporter, so tell me. You want me to tell you? Yeah, because my son's a Liverpool supporter. So <laughs> they, lost, they lost 3-0 at home against Atlanta. I may just um, go and speak to him then when we finish the game. <laughs> Does your, your lad play football then, Gav? Um, he, he did, and he was looking to go to do a scholarship in america um so we did that um oh, nice. sort of tech thing and then um lockdown and covid hit and everything so that messed him up so i do not like that period because i think it lost a lot of people's opportunities in life yeah. and that but yeah. he's found something else and he found like crypto and is he's, he's now oh, a, a sort of businessman <laughs> he says so yeah no he's 21 now so he's um i've got yeah. a man in the house which is a bit weird. But... Right, he's doing all the crypto, mate. You can get, get him out then. You can get his own house. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. He was thinking about that, but now he's... And he's the flower up. boys told him he's got enough yeah. money now to get out. <laughs> yeah, now he's, he's, he's made sure he's keeping that little safe and then just yeah. living off this while we do everything. Brilliant. Um, well, have you, Ains, got anything to ask before we start to wrap up? I think one question I was going to ask earlier, um, just if you had any like pre-match rituals or any superstitions or anything like that um, before any games or anything go. Um, no, I I didn't really do that, but I used to try and follow if somebody was um, doing well and they said they used to do something, I would sort of try that. <laughs> so I remember when um, I think Alan Shearer was doing something, he said he used to eat, um, I think it was beans and chicken, <laughs> boiled chicken beforehand so i tried that and little things like that i just sort of i i was always uh watching someone else to see if i can implement some of theirs in, into my game and stuff like that but whether it works or not who knows oh i do have one more sorry um what is your uh, do you have any memorabilia from your playing days like swapping shirts things like that and if so what's your price possession um i had um Kits from, say, um, Cardiff, um, Lincoln, um, and then I also had a Middlesbrough shirt um, and a Bolton shirt, a Kotcher. 
James Oh, Jones. nice. Oh, what a player he was. Um, but they, most of my shirts now have gone because the people have asked for things. And then um, wow. what we had left is the Millsborough, the Bolton, a Cardiff one, and a Lincoln one. And they're with the kids. So it's up to them what they want to do with them. So I gave them to them. Oh, right, mate. Right. Caught your shirt. Class. Love that. Was that been from the um, the preseason friendly? No, no. It was... Um, um, is it? I remember Jason, that one. Jason, no, is it Jason Whittle? Oh, someone used to play with him at, at um, Bolton. Oh yeah, and it was at Notts County with me, centre half. I can't remember his name, but he he got me the shirt and he, he said um, I forgot shirt and he he got me that one. But we played, um, I think it was Notts County. We played Middlesbrough as well, and that's where I got the Middlesbrough shirt. Job, job Last question from me then before we let you go, Gav, because I know we're dragging it on. And no, no, sorry, mate. <laughs> no, no problem. So, what would um, what would a Gavin Gordon um, in 2024 say then to a Gavin Gordon, perhaps who was I don't know, 12, 13, 14? Oh, what a question. Um, work well with knowing what the technology is now is about just about fitness and about how to look after yourself because that's where my problem started so when i was 16 i i sort of pulled my hamstring and get, get a hole literally on the pitch so i was running through and i pulled went off and the physio sort of came on with his cigarette in his mouth because still at that time <laughs> he, he, went, he went um oh, i think it's cramp cramp right and then so i I'd rested it for a bit and then went out next game and tried it and then ripped it completely off. And then that's Jesus. where it all started going problems. So it's all about just about looking after your body. So fitness, make sure you're the you're fit enough to do the job because once you when you felt fit, that is when you played well. So look after yourself, okay. be fit. Mate, you have been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. obviously, not the last time we see you because you've been. No, no, I'm, I'm around, so like I've say, definitely got, I've got, I've got so many more questions in my bank, but I've refrained and I've kept them in tight. But no, honestly, mate, massively appreciate your time. Thank you, Ains, for your amazing question, mate. You've been class. Um, obviously, the guys' comments and things like that have been outstanding. So, thank you, everyone. Um, also, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, do the usual business. Um, for the price of a pint of car in a month, you can become an ace patron as well. Um, on that bombshell, there's only one thing left to say, but Gav, can you do us the honors? Upper floor, yeah. <laughs>